Hello once again. Welcome to this is about a Toyota Camry. Actually from a couple years ago. Not very recent. But the reason I popped this one up is because to show you the foundation is still there. The basics is still there. And you'll understand it when we go through it hopefully. Now where do you start from a schematic? You see this is not the typical schematic that we usually go over. The usual one is like this. Correct? Well, this is different, and the B plus is up here, and we start from the battery up here going down. Not in this case. This is from the, the Chilton textbooks for automotive, and you can see it's a little more complicated. The battery is down here. Not You don't have the B pluses up here. So that's one difference. Now you're going to see that everything laid out over here in this one is right in front of you there's no continuation some you know like point a and then another page another page everything pretty much is here for the starter ignition system over here how do you start where do you start from like we always said regardless of the system that you're looking at that you're going to analyze or troubleshoot key components should catch your attention what's a key component right here if we talk about starting systems the starter right here now the starter the symbol for it is different See how they put it for the starter motor over here? Much different than where we are used to. So basically you have to get used to the different symbols, how they use it. Now, that's a key component. I concentrate on that one. What's another key component? A relay. Okay, another key component. Ignition. Another key component, since we talk about a V6. Six cylinders. This is very important over here. See, three coil packs two coils in each pack giving you six coils for the six cylinders very important these are key components the wiring these little things the wiring not not so important right now we just got to get the key components and attach everything together how they work where do you start from okay i usually start from the relay i usually we start from this side this is the coil side this has to be activated first to activate this. So I always go here. This part is going to ground, and that's not going to help me. I start over here, and I go my way back up to here, 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 and to the switch. That's one way of doing it. Doesn't mean that's the that's the only way, but for me, that's per the preferred way, the recommended way that I that I can analyze it. You can start from the battery going over here. You can start from the battery going here. Doesn't make a difference. As long as you attach everything and understand how the system comes about. Now, let's say start from the battery, okay? We're going through something called a fusible link. This is a different symbol than your usual fuse, you see? This is a wavy line, but there's a very thick wavy line. Goes through a fusible link that we talked about. Now, where two wires are connected together, they melt at a certain temperature. Now, when we come to this one, this is a fusible link block. These are the terminals, as you can see. As you can see over here, by the letters and the numbers. We have to come out of this fusible lo uh, uh, block. Here comes the hard part. If we, there are several paths that we can take, okay? One path going here, one path going here, another path going here which path do we take well we eventually have to get to somehow the path that leads us to the starter motor and to the relay that's what that's what the path we're looking for and the ignition switch let's take for example this path we're going to go out here this goes to a 100 amp alternator fuse for the alternator if we come up here that means somehow this path is going to lead me to the alternator I'm not really concerned about the alternator. I have a starting problem. An alternator is after you start the car, right? And then you have an alternator problem, a charging system problem. We don't have that. We have we have a no crank system over here, a, a no crank uh, problem over here. So let's follow it anyway. We go through this ignition switch to right here the black and red wire coming out here going out of fuse of pin two coming in one going out two 40 amp fuse going over here a white wire when this is closed when we close it then we come to 
the alternator. See the symbol for an alternator? Different from the ones you're actually used to. That's why I picked this diagram. You have to get used to different symbols of different manufacturers. So that's not our problem. Okay? That path is not good for us. Let's try the other path. We go in here, 1A. We go in here. We're going to come out this one. Remember we said remember we said we have two paths to go. We have one over here. If we take this path, guess what? We go through the fusible link. However, what did we just say? Before we can get to this, we have to get to this one. This is this starts the relay. So going in this path will not help us. Right now this is open to us. The only thing that will close it is this. So we have to find a path that leads us to this part of the circuit. So let's so this is not the path. Let's try over here. Let's try this path, what we're left with. We come out here again, follow the green. Pin one of this block, go through a regular fuse, 30 amps, white black wire over here, go through here, same wire, seven, pin seven, this is the ignition switch, these are the pin numbers of the ignition switch. We have 12 volts here, we close it. Now, let's see the path that we're able to take somehow again we have to end up over here let's go over here this one we go over here black wire b is black wire actually uh this is uh, i believe this is eight pin eight we come in here another another uh fuse pin four this is pin three a five amp star starter fuse we come over here now, if you're in a park neutral switch, you're going to go this way, okay? As I said, this is pretty complicated. Chilton, sometimes they make easy ones, sometimes they make very difficult ones. This happens to be a very difficult one. We go over here, we go through here, okay? Through B2, over here, black and white wire, B2, again, black and white wire. Here comes the difficult part. Park neutral position switch. We have to get from here to here, to here. How do we go about that? From here to here, what's what's in between them? This is in between, this is in between, this is in between, this is in between. So somehow they have to tie together. We come in here into this terminal, and I drew over it, but I think it's terminal five, a pin five. When we close the park, or the selector, the position switch is closed in park or neutral, we come in here, go over here, and we come out pin six. Either one. If you're in park, you go in here. Here's the here's the 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 the, the, the terminal, the jumper in between them. Here, here, and we come out here. If you're in neutral, here we go in here to this terminal. Come out this terminal. We come out this terminal here, and the same one over here. Either one that you're in, park or neutral. If you don't work, if you can't start the car in park, put it in neutral. Try that. Up. Okay. So we come out here. Again, they love these junction connectors. They love them, Toyota. We come over here. So C, I believe. This is C. Terminal. And this is A. Over here. A and B. These terminals over here. We come over here. And where do we get to? go over here we go over here and finally we get to our destination which is the coil pin one and i think this is pin four i think so we go over here and we start this activation process for this to start this flowing look how much we had to go through just to get to this part we went through the ignition switch we went through this fuse we went through another junction connector they love junction connectors, as we said. We go through a, a, a park neutral safety switch. We go through another junction connector. We come out over here. We come out over here. Black and orange wire over here. And finally, we go through here, through here, through here. To activate this, now this will close. Now current can flow here. When this happens, this is closed. Guess what? It goes to the solenoid. Now that very thick, thick wire with all the... All the current flowing through it finally goes through here to black and red wire. That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, also, the other part of this wire goes to the ignition coils, to start the ignition coils. As you can see over here, we have this goes to 
the engine control module. Disk engine control module triggers this on and off. We need to collapse the, the, the magnetic field. That's what this is for. It'll pulse it. Whenever you turn this off, you get the magnetic field, you get a spark. Okay, but the most important part is this one over here. Okay, one more time, one more time. We started off the video 10 minutes ago. How do we go about this? we got to find a path somehow that ties us to this, okay? This path is the wrong path. This is the thick wire. Before we get to here, we have to get to here. We try different ones. Go over here. Going over here brings us to the alternator. We're not concerned with the alternator. Going over here doesn't concern us. We have to get through the switch. The only one that goes through the switch is this path right here. Through the switch, through another fuse, through a junction connector, through another junction connect, I mean the safety switch over here, park neutral safety switch, another junction connector, boom, brings us to a point that we need. Then we go over here to this one over here, pin one, pin two, I believe, or three, through this, and then we're in business over here. That's the difference between this one and the other one that you're used to seeing. You have to be flexible. When it comes to reading diagrams, you have to be able to read all data, Mitchell, all these different. You see how the, how they are laid out much differently than the than the ones that we went out that we usually go over of these type. Like let's say this is the starting circuit for this one. You see how everything is different. Look at the starter motor over here, the symbol for this one, and look at the symbol. Look at the start. Look at the symbol for this one. Let's compare. See, this is an M telling you it's a motor. Here it doesn't tell you that. It just shows you like a picture of it, a pictorial view of it. That's why I picked this one to show you. Look how different from this one is to this one is, right? Now, you, the problem is no crank. Let's start over here, 12 volts. Okay? I can test this point at 12 volts. The other point goes to zero. Starting from the battery, you have 12 volts here. We have 12 volts over here. We came out of fusible link at 12 volts. We didn't lose any voltage. With going this path, we could have 12 volts here through the fusible link. We didn't lose any voltage. Going when this is closed, 12 volts. We don't lose any voltage through a switch. Going to the solenoid. Fine. Let's go over here. We have zero volts here and 12 volts. How much is the voltage drop from here to here? If you said 12 volts, you're correct. That means this is working, if you have 12 volts. If this is 12 volts, this is 12 volts, you're floating. You're not connected to ground. Now, let's say we're over here, zero volts. I put my meter over here. If I can take it and measure the, the relay in circuit, as I have showed you, you can do that. That's the best way to troubleshoot. Zero volts, I get over here. What's the next point of attack? We have a no crank. We went to the relay, right? We have zero volts over here. What's the next possible thing? You said the fuse, of course, the fuse, right? Let's say we, we go up here, zero volts. Let's say I find this junction connector. I have 12 volts over here. Does that mean the fuse is good? Yes, the fuse is good. Does that mean the junction connector is good? Yes. How do I know? Because I have 12 volts still here. I'm connected to the battery. So we have 12 volts here, we have zero volts. Where did we lose the voltage? Try to figure out where. If you said here, you're correct. You're, you're correct. Maybe the park neutral switch is not working. Maybe there's something broken here. We have 12 volts here, and maybe we lost something here. That's possible. Okay? How about this wire? That's also possible. It's opened up. How about on, over here? Something is open for here. The junction, the connection from here to here is open. So we have 12 volts here. We have zero volts. Any possible thing in the line over here will break it open and we'll lose the zero volts. Can this be shorted to ground? Yes, it's possible. If this is shorted to ground, guess what? You're gonna blow a fuse. We didn't blow the fuse. We have 12 volts here. We had, uh, we had 12 volts over here. <clears throat> After that, we lost it, okay? We got zero volts. Let's say now we have zero volts here again. Zero volts over here we have. We come back over here, we have 12 volts after, after the park neutral safety switch. What can be the problem? If you said this, you're correct. If you said this, you're correct. If you said this wire, you are correct. 
Okay? Let's go over here. Zero volts again. We come over here, zero volts again. Zero volts here. Zero volts here. But 12 volts here. What's in between here and here? The only thing that's in between them are is the ignition switch or this wire. Then you could say the ignition switch might be bad. One more. I measure 12 volts here, but I measure zero volts here. Is the ignition switch good? If you said it's not, you're wrong. If I get 12 volts over here and I'm connected, that means I'm connected through the switch, through the ignition switch. I measure zero volts over here. Why? Because this blue. That must mean there's a short somewhere. Like I made, a, like I make a, a video how to measure uh, uh, um, relays and circuit and how to measure battery terminals. Very important. Take off the battery cables. Measure resistance. That will tell you if you have a good connection. Like a customer who came in and said a battery was changed by the dealership. They didn't even bother to even clean the cables, which had high resistance. High resistance means you're going to lose voltage drop across the cables and the terminals. Very important to the post. Okay. Now, one more. 12 volts over here. 12 volts over here. Zero volts here. What's my next option? Zero volts here, but 12 volts over here. What could be in between them? Look what's in between the two points. Look for the point that you have it and the point that you lost. I had 12 volts over here, but I have zero volts over here. What does it mean? That must mean that I lost either this is open, this is bad, the wire is bad, or the fusible link is bad. One more. I have 12 volts over here and I have 12 volts over here. What's the, where is there a problem? If you said the switch is bad, you're wrong. How do I have 12 volts? There is no problem. If I measure 12 volts here and I measure 12 volts over here, that means everything is working good. There is no problem, see? Tried to trick you. Anyway, please watch those videos. Please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. Thank you for the monet for monetizing me. That was a great gift this year for the, for the viewers and all that. Great questions, technical questions. Uh, my other channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Trying to get more views for that one um, and subscribe to that one to the other channel. Um, thanks for watching and enjoy the holidays.